What's up guys, welcome back. I am currently in frozen tundra, New Hampshire. I am at my father's place. Uh, my girlfriend and I came up to see my folks before we end up heading back to Tennessee. But while we're up here, I'm collecting some things, picking up one of my extra beetle motors, a beetle transmission, uh, some tin work and all that. But I'm also putting my eyes on my 52 Chevy cab over five window that is an unfinished project and the bane of my existence. I talked about this truck quite a bit on the channel when I first started the YouTube channel, um, but this is a 1952 five window uh, Chevy cab over. Uh, it's got the Chevrolet front end. The GMC front ends are a little bit different. And this is on a mid nineties Dodge one ton dually long wheelbase two wheel drive chassis with a 12 valve 6BT uh, P-Pump Cummins turbo diesel with an NV4500 five speed manual transmission behind it. Uh, we built it on air suspension. Right now, uh, the setup just has some blocks in where the airbags would normally be. Uh, but we have a ton of work into this truck. We built a custom front drop axle because the Dodge setups were a straight axle. We built a drop steering assembly. We built a whole subframe for the cab to sit on, which mounted to the frame. We did a lot of interior work because we had to cut the whole floor out in order to fit that uh, mechanical injected Cummins in there. And it, I lost motivation on it not necessarily interest uh started taking on a few other projects that could be done and finished uh before this thing could be and unfortunately it's been sitting outside for the last five or maybe even six years now so this is something that really kind of made me sore about moving away from new hampshire and headed down to chattanooga was that this truck was going to stay up here and i wasn't going to be able to finish it in a timely manner with my father the truck will not go to chattanooga i'm not even going to attempt to finish this truck in tennessee alone um, especially since uh, the shop is a little tight for this and uh, my dad just has a shop that he's been working out of his whole life and there's far more um, utilities and equipment in order to finish this project better this is one of my original dream trucks uh, the 47 to 53 Chevy and GMC uh, generation cab overs especially the five windows with the corner glass in the cab so this is literally one of my childhood dream trucks. And the original idea was to be a car hauler. We were gonna put a flatbed on it, bag the whole truck so the truck lays on the ground and haul the Corvair on it or the Corvair in the 700. Uh, the plans for the back of the truck have changed a lot over the years, but they've all just kind of changed in my head, not necessarily anything that we've done to the truck because we haven't even finished the back of the truck yet. But it pains me that it's taken this long. It pains me that it sits outside and it pains me that I'm not driving the truck yet. But I also have my 1970 Super Beetle up here as well, which uh, you guys may have seen an episode back maybe two years ago. I picked this up uh, maybe even a year ago, simply for the pan. This is a light pan. This is a ball joint IRS pan. The body's got some rust. So I'll be looking to get rid of the body. I've got all the panels. I'm pretty sure I've got all the glass. So if anyone wants a 1970 Beetle, I'd be willing to let that body go. But I got the pan off a friend of mine uh, in order to have an extra pan around in case another Beetle pan project arises, like the BMW 700. But what we're picking up here is the stroker motor. I've got a dual port stroker motor that I got with that pan uh, that's not finished. It's not, it's not finished being built yet, but I want to bring the motor back to Chattanooga as well as uh, transmission, a Beetle transmission. So at least I've got those in Tennessee and I'm able to utilize them. Um, operation Plasma Cut and we'll do upside offset. so this is the 
1600 and the transmission and my buddy John and his dad who built this thing said that they had boarded out and that it was ultimately a stroker motor. Now I have no idea if that's the case or not. I'd have to actually take the thing apart and put dial calipers in there and find out um, if it has had some machine work done uh, and if it is indeed a stroker motor. If it is, that's pretty cool because it'll be a hot little motor and probably a hot little car. Probably not the 700, but nonetheless wanted to get this back down to Chattanooga so I could ultimately build this out and actually have a running motor set aside in case I ever needed it. We can go, we can go this against the wheel well so these studs don't dig into our carpet, I guess. Do you want to turn it? Put this. I guess if this transmission here. will. Yep. Yep. Make sure to download the Wheel Price app, which is in the description of this video below, which is free. It's for the iOS and Android platform, so it doesn't matter what smartphone you have. It's a free wheel classifieds app where you can buy and sell your wheels. It's growing every day. More and more automotive enthusiasts are getting on board. So it's becoming a real good platform to find the set of wheels that you've been looking for. All right, guys, I am home from New Hampshire from the cold tundra of basically single digit Fahrenheit weather to t-shirt weather. It's currently 70 degrees out in Chattanooga, Tennessee right now. Uh, this is the weather that I moved down here for. What I'm sure you guys are waiting to hear because I'm this episode is jumping all over the place. It's been a couple weeks since I got home uh, and I had a couple episodes. The last few episodes you've seen on the channel have uh, kind of stacked up before I went to New Hampshire. So the thumbnail of this video, the reason why you guys are probably watching this episode is I have sold a century. Uh, something I've talked about for a little bit now. I kind of would throw little flashing lures out on Instagram that I was considering selling it just to kind of see who was out there, who had their finger on that pulse, who might have been looking for one. I thought about going with Bring a Trailer, but in the end, uh, somebody hit me up on Instagram, uh, made me an offer right in the ballpark where I was thinking about asking for the car, and uh, we made a deal. Definitely bittersweet. A lot of you guys know that I searched for this car, specifically this car, for a solid eight years. I mean, maybe a decade uh, as I sold projects and I'd have some money to put into another project. I'd take a lot of time to look for one of these cars to no avail and then I'd buy something else and then maybe not look for a little bit. And then when I sold another project, same deal. I, I kind of sporadically looked for one of these cars for that long, it seemed like. And to finally acquire one, uh, what an amazing opportunity it was to own this car. The journey with this car was, was nothing short of incredible. To be able to purchase this car and drive it literally coast to coast across America with two friends and be able to do a bunch of pop-up meets along the way to hang out with a lot of you guys, to ultimately build an air suspension setup for it, to have a bagged long wheelbase Toyota Century was something that I kind of always dreamed of and wasn't sure if it would ever happen simply because they'd only built a few hundred of these and just never knew if I was ever gonna be able to afford one. And so when the opportunity came up to buy this car as I was selling my E23, uh, it was basically the stars aligning that I was selling the E23 and I was able to move that money right into this car. After getting the air suspension done and building these 1997 work VSX-9s, uh, getting the opportunity to cruise the car on the Ocean City Strip was another bucket list thing uh, if I'd ever been able to uh, buy one of these cars and bag it. So to get that done was really cool. And then having the chance to have the car featured in S3 Magazine was another unforeseen opportunity that I'm really, really grateful to have had with this car. I would never thought this car would be in print either. I mean, I could go on and on uh, as a repetitive broken record about how bittersweet it is and uh, knowing that this car is uh, leaving my garage here very shortly. It's already technically left my possession and uh, we've done the deal. And it's, it's kind of crazy to know that this car sitting here now isn't really mine anymore. And I'm just waiting for a trailer to come pick it up. 
want to give a huge thanks and huge shout out to the first few of you guys that have signed on to the Patreon page. Uh, when I first announced it in the last YouTube episode, I uh, cannot thank you guys enough for your support there. It means the world to me that you guys are willing to invest in this and help support the channel, help support some of the builds. I have leaked uh, full disclosure what we're doing with the six series out in California on the Patreon page, posted some photos and a long-winded kind of explanation of what we're doing there. Uh, so the first few of you guys that are on that page know what's going on, giving you guys some early access to these YouTube episodes as well as the podcast episodes. Getting that back going, the podcast is coming back. It's been just a long hiatus with the move down here to Chattanooga. So I'm setting up the studio as we speak. So once again, the Patreon page link is in the video's description below. Thank you guys so much. I mean, it, it's unbelievable that just a handful of you guys have signed on already. Uh, really looking forward to growing that page and getting you guys involved more. I'm still in the process of setting the shop up more. Uh, now that this car is gone, I might be investing in possibly a lift and some other shop tooling and equipment. Well, that's it. That's it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.